live from the Frederick P. Rose Hall, home of jazz at Lincoln Center in New York, New York. It's The Cube at IBM Z Next, redefining digital business. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in New York. This is theCUBE, special broadcast of the IBM Z Systems announcement. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante here extracting the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Samuel Durangu, who's the general manager of Kenya Power. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much. So tell us, um, what's it like being in New York City with the IBM announcement, and what do you think about the new system, the System ah, it's Z? Uh, it's awesome, it's fascinating. It's very good to have it, and we are proud that we are the first uh, customer to buy it in, uh, in Africa. Yes. What's the big performance gain? What's, what do you like the most about this product? Okay, I like it because of the, first of all, the, the fast performance. It's very fast, reliable, and the, the, the performance is all, it's able to manipulate a lot of data at, at the very fast the, the fast, fast rate, because um, one of the things that users hate is whereby you, you, you are querying the system, and you have to wait for the system to be processed. This is a system that you call, we have what you call speed of thought. If by the time you finish typing it, you already have the uh -huh. answer. <laughs> that is the most exciting thing about it. So what's going yeah. on in, in Kenya with power? What's the state of the industry? Talk about the organization. Okay, uh, I want to start by talking about Kenya. Kenya is, uh, is a country in the eastern part of Africa, and uh, is the fastest growing hub uh, in, the, in, in Africa, north of, north of South, Af South, Af South, Af South Africa. And uh, it has a population of about 43 million, and um, with a very high unemployment rate, of about 40%. And, um, Sorry, what was the percentage? 40%. 40%. 40%. And uh, the access to power is about that 5%, and uh, the internet access is about 53.3%. And uh, we have about uh, that 1.8 million subscribers for mobile telephony and uh, about 3 million accounts for power. So the government has got a very serious challenge of trying to curb unemployment because when you have an, a very high percentage of youth, especially youth who are not employed, they engage into other, 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 other negative vices. And therefore, what the government has done is realize that uh, the only way to curb that unemployment is to grow the economy. And you can never grow the economy in darkness. So, there's a vision, the government has what we call Vision 2030, which is the, aimed at uh, making Kenya a middle income economy by 2030. And so that we will be able now to create enough jobs for the unemployed youth. And um, the way government wants to do is that uh, it has, it's focusing on, on three pillars, economic, social, and political. Those are the key pillars that are going to drive that process. And um, one of the main sectors that is going to enable that especially economy is power. Because I've talked to have that 5% access to power. So you cannot develop with such a low percentage. So there is a plan by the government to increase that rate from the current that 5% to about 7% by 2017, and maybe by 2030, about 95%. And therefore, the government has come up with a plan of, of accelerating the rate of of growth of in the power sector. Right now, our current generation is about two, two gigawatts, and the government wants to increase that to about seven gigawatts in 40 months. That is by 2017, you come from two, two gigawatts to about seven gigawatts, which is a, a very big jump. And um, so now, after doing that, the, the, the government expects Kenya Power to grow the demand, to help the grow the demand to match the, the the, 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 that increased generation. Because one of the reasons why many investors feel that Kenya is not a very good uh, hub for investment is because of the, the cost of power, the availability of power, and the availability of the power, the quality of power. Because you don't have an industry whereby you're not sure you're going to have uh, power 100%. Because it means that you have to invest in backup generation to be able to continue your, your, pro, your production when the power is not there. So for somebody to come and invest, he has to be assured that, the, first of all, the cost is, is, good, is competitive. Right now, our, our price of power is about 17 US cents 
on average, when you compare it with US, which is about 12, 12 US cents, China is about 8 US cents, India is about 8, 8 US cents, and therefore, so if somebody is producing goods in Kenya, he cannot compete in the, in the world market because the cost is, power is almost above that 5% input, one of the inputs in the production. So what does it take to get it below, say, to a more competitive rate, let's say below 10 cents? We, we, more capacity the, the idea or? here is that um, uh, out of, uh, uh, other than just increasing the generation, we want to make sure that the generation that we put in is from cheaper sources. Because right now our generation is mainly from hydro and then um, geothermal and uh, fossil fuel. And what happens is that you see the hydro is, uh, is weather dependent. So it means that when you have drought, we don't have enough generation. So we have to bring in expensive power to be able to meet the deficit. So what happens now is that um, the government wants to make sure that the sources that we are going to have are sources that are co a, low, a lower cost. So much of the digital that is going to come in is come, going to come from coal, LPG, and geothermal, which are cheaper courses, so that you can bring, the, on average, the cost to Sorry, about... coal, uh, LPG... Uh, and uh, geothermal. Uh -huh, yeah, yes, right, right, right. Geothermal, so, okay, yes. so geothermal is uh, a actually... A, a, a growing part of the yes, yes, equation. Yes, yes, yes. So when that one is done, you're able not to assure that uh, the the power is competitive priced and also available because those those uh, those sources do not depend on the weather. So you can be able to manage and ensure that the power is available. So how, how what kind of plant capacity you're building out? Is it a can you quantify that? I mean, how much capacity each year you build out or? or okay, okay. Like uh, I may not be able to have the facts. Uh, with me now, yeah, but, but roughly. Um, but um, I know that uh, out of the by the time we reach seven gigawatts, the coke should be about 21 percent, LPG about 21 percent, and then uh, geothermal could be about uh, another maybe 30 percent, and uh, the f the hydro will go down from current 50 percent to about uh, less than 10 percent. What is it today? 50. 50 percent, yes. It's going to go below 10 percent, and uh, force your fuel is going to be less than 5%. So you're putting in expensive yes. infrastructure, yes. plants, generation yes. plants. Yes. How is that funded? You know, okay, no matter what you have is that we have what we call independent power producers. Yeah. You you have uh, private investors coming in to, in, to invest, yep. and then you have what we call purchase power agreement. You guarantee them they are going to purchase the power, their power into the, into the grid. So the, the investment is with the private where you have long-term contracts of 20 years, 20 years, whereby they are sure that when they put out the plants, they will be selling the power to, to the country. Okay. And uh, what happens is that you also have uh, what you call capacity charge. If, if by in the, in the event that uh, the infrastructure is not, not able to take up the power, you pay them for the capacity. Okay, so now let's talk about your IT infrastructure. Yes, yes, yes. So, we'll so now what happens now is that, um, as I talked about the importance of making sure that that dream is achieved by making sure that uh, yeah. the, 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 the demand is, is grown. Now, we need information, a very accurate information, because the government has this plan. We have to make sure that the, the plan, we are making sure that the, the, the plan of creating demand is very accurate. We are giving the information, accurate information to the government, because this is a projection of about seven gigawatts. We don't want to reach a point whereby, by 2015, 2017, we find that we have the seven gigawatts, but we don't have the the energy, the, the demand. So we have to be able to, pro to do a lot of predictive prediction to know that how, how, how is, are we, are we, are we, how is our strategy working? So that we know by the time we reach there, if we're able to, to have the demand meet the, the, the generation. So that if you find that we are not able to grow that demand, you can quickly go and change your strategy. Maybe instead of going to seven gigawatts, maybe you can go to about five gigawatts. All you can maybe it's nine nine gigawatts. You don't know. So 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 the, the, what is the ABM doing is that it's creating a platform whereby we have information which is easily accessible, accurate information which can be relied on, so that and then the stakeholders can access that information very easily from any device from anywhere. So people talk about the transaction systems. Yes. Talk about analytic systems. It sounds like a lot of what you're doing is analytic. Data. Yes, because we already have information. We already have applications that are doing the business. We have, we have the operations that are doing the billing system. Others, which are, they have, we have an ERP system, which is uh, doing the logistics, H, HR, and also, and also a bit of financials. We have other systems that are doing um, uh, those applications that are to, for the performance of the, of the system, like the SCADA system, the design and construction system. All those things, are, but they are in silos. 
So why do it on a mainframe? Why not use uh, x86 system? No, no, no because, the, because the, what we want to do is that we want to have a system that has enough capacity to be able to run, to give that information easily. And also we have also plans in future to consolidate some of these applications. Instead of running in those different boxes, which are very expensive in terms of hardware and also licensing, we should be able to migrate them into this, into this mainframe so that we reduce the cost of hardware and also the footprint. So that's the idea we have. But now we are using it for analytics, but in future, we will be able to migrate the systems from this side of the boxes into one mainframe. So that for ease of management and- So you can consolidate- Yes, we consolidate- All your infrastructure yes, on a single yes, mainframe. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and and how, how long have you been using the mainframes? The, the, we, have not, we have not had, this is our first mainframe. Sorry, so this, this is, is our first one. mainframe, yes. When did you put it in? About one year ago. A year ago? Yes, yes. Okay, so what was that like? What was there before the mainframe? The mainframe, we, we had a system like engineered systems from other... Just stove providers. pipe systems? All yes, yes. X86 systems? Yes, we have, uh, yeah, most of Unix systems. Unix, Unix systems. systems, okay. Yeah, so yeah. you've replaced many of those, all of those? You sort of consolidated them? Yes, what we're doing is that we are not replacing them as yet, but you see, as they come to the end of their, yeah, yeah, their, yeah. their life, used to life, instead of now replacing them with the same system. So you'll sunset system. those systems? Yes, then we will migrate them, yes. Okay, Yes. where do you see this going? Where do you, how, how do you see your infrastructure growing and your, your application portfolio growing? Well, it is, it is growing because right like now we have a customer base of about uh, three million. We expect that uh, by 2017, we should be able to be around seven million and then uh, maybe up to 10 billion. So as the customer base grows, that is, this, this is big data. You see big data, we have to, to have a vision that is able to do that big data. We also want to improve on the customer experience mm -hmm. because the customer is getting more enlightened. They would like to, to monitor their, their consumption. They're able to connect the system for building systems. So we want to be able to have a, an infrastructure that is able to, to offer fast information and then also secure information. And then especially for, any device from anywhere, this, the mobility, so that uh, wherever they are, someone can question, the, can connect the system from a mobile phone, or from a, a, knife, a tablet, or from anything that they have, and get it very fast on the, on the, because we want to help in fast decision, fast decision making, and in, improve on the customer experience. Talk yes. about the customer experience, talk about the customer experience where you're at now, in, the, in overall in your, in your territory. A lot of mobile, on board, a lot of people using mobile. What's some of the breakdown of usage for your customers with their technology? Okay, we can say that uh, we have, uh, there are areas which we have, uh, which we have focused on the use of the mobility to our customers. First of all is the bill payment. The customers can pay their bills from the, their phones. You know, Kenya is very successful in the mobile money transfer. Yep. So the customers can can get their, first of all, they can credit their bill from their, from their, 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 their mobile phones. They create the bill and then you also en enable them to pay. They can also they can also report outages. When the customers are out of supply, they can report. They can query the system and report mm -hmm. that we are out of supply. But um, what now we want to do now is to go beyond, whereby we can now even enable customers to do predictions, to know their customer, their consumption patterns, to know are they increasing their usage or are they decreasing their usages. Those are things. In which areas are they are they um, where, 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 where are they using more of their power? And also we are preparing ourselves for the smart grid. Because you know, in future, we want customers to be responsible for their, for their, for their, for their consumption. Yeah. To know when to consume power and uh, when not, depending on the, the cost. Samuel, yes. thank you for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Want to say thank you. Great to see you here in New York City. And yes. this is truly a global announcement, Dave. And IBM Z is uh, having a great event. We're live in New York City. This is yes. theCUBE. Yes. We'll be right back after this short break. This is John Furrier with Dave Vellante, live in New York City for theCUBE. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome. Thank you so much.